And there's Jesus. And he sent his Holy Spirit. And we would not lose connection to him. And that's how we know the Holy Spirit. We can distinguish Holy Spirit from any spirit because it's Holy Spirit who distinguishes Jesus. No other spirit will lead us to Jesus Amen. in an authentic, true way. So we don't have to be confused. So we speak the name of Jesus. Dan's worship uh, focused uh, so much on the power of Jesus and uh, his fulfillment of his purpose on earth. Do I know my purpose? Do you know your purpose? Jesus knew his purpose. And so that could be a question you're asking yourself. God, I'm still in search of my purpose. I don't want to be living this life without having fulfilled on the purpose that you've given me. So what's the purpose? And I can tell you today that we live in a time, I have no doubt about this whatsoever. And when you think about it, and we can talk about it, Every single person alive now with the capacity to make a decision will be given the opportunity to receive or reject Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because he is making his presence known like never before He's taking full advantage, Holy Spirit is taking full advantage of everything God has created for us and through us to deliver his message of love and life everlasting. And I, for one, made it so difficult most of my life. <laughs> When in truth, it's, 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 uh, mm, it's pretty simple, you know. I love you, and I can give you life everlasting, and I can give you an inheritance like no one else. Would you like to have that? Hmm. And, and what's it cost me? Nothing. Well, that's a deal that's too good to be true, except it's my son Jesus, who's the way, the life, and the truth. He's the one that's giving you the offer. And if you'll look and see... It's not too good to be true. It's the inheritance I promised my children. And I give you the choice. <laughs> he came and, and, and his own didn't believe, but those who did believe on his name, received the right to become a child of God. Mm -hmm. Born not of the blood of man or the will or the flesh of of man, but born of God. And in that couple sentences, God unveiled through John what he was up to. The fallen world wasn't God's plan, and yet we live in it. But he said, you know, my kingdom came with my son, and my will was done by my son. What do you want to believe? Do you want to believe the world, or do you want to believe me? We can talk about sin, but he's already taken care of it. He's already blotted it out. And then he says, so, would you like to learn from me? He said, I showed you what forgiveness looks like. I'm not holding that account against you. But unless you release that account, that debt that the other one's put on you, I'm not able to forgive you. Notice how important that is. Better to not be offended. 
But if there is a hard place in my heart toward you or someone else, better to get that cleaned up before the sun sets. Heaven forbid I would <laughs> rest in eternity with a debt of unforgiveness that God couldn't pay back or couldn't take care of. There's, there's, a, there's something there, right? So I learned um, when I was a little baby, I knew, I knew God. And I knew I knew God. And I shared this the other day. By the time I was three, I, I could recite the Lord's Prayer because I, I had a love for the Lord. And I was raised by a priest, uh, my stepfather. My dad died when I was five. My niece was born the same day he died, January 16, 1957. She was born six and a half years after I was born by my oldest sister, who was a pre-World War II baby. And my niece passed at 7.07 .07 p.m., January 15, so close to her 66th birthday. She died of pancreatic cancer. She didn't know she had it <coughs> until it had already taken her. And that's not unusual with pancreatic cancer. I'm going to tell you, someone here is dealing with cancer, and you may not know it. Or someone you know is dealing with cancer. It is not to be accepted. I was talking to a man the other day. He said, you know, the, the truth is we're all born with cancer cells in us. It's just a question when they're going to activate. That's a lie. <laughs> You don't want to accept that. You don't want to have that spoken over you. You want to break that one off because that's not true. And if it is true, well, all right. So I'm born as a, as a, as a fallen man with inequities from my father. There's cancer in my family. And it got my niece. <coughs> but John 1 speaks about it. And he says, you know, they who believe on the name of Jesus receive the right to become a child of God. And then, and then it goes on to say, born not of the flesh of man or the will of man, but of God. Didn't that just take care of what my friend said? We're all born with cancer cells just waiting to be activated. There's a medical doctor in this room. I know when I talk with Steve, our bodies are designed to heal. <laughs> God didn't make junk, right? We just junked it up. There's an inheritance there, but we can break it off. And, and I know the cancer's uh, present. I was seeing it broken off. When we began thinking about what's going on with healing, we were seeing healing at our church, miraculous healing of cancer. And it was like we could, not, we could not pass by without seeing it. It became in our face, right? And we've seen a lot of cancers healed <clears throat> miraculously and some through a process. It's not don't go to the doctor. It's let God, let God have charge of this, right? And uh, there's a word, ask Jesus, and he'll do it. Well, some translations in that part of the Bible is command. So I command cancer. I break it off. I curse it at the root. I hate cancer. It's a weapon of Satan. He's used it pristinely for a long, long time. It's caused a lot of pain and suffering in a lot of people's lives. And it's right up the alley of Satan who came to steal, kill, and destroy. He is not our friend, and cancer is not an absolute. God is. <laughs> Amen. And I have seen cancer fall off people. My mother-in-law passed with pancreatic cancer. She had no idea. They're treating her therapeutically with physical therapy for pain in her hip. It was hidden. That's Satan. That disease does not come from God, and you don't want to claim it, and you don't want to be around anyone who does without rebuking that, correcting it. It's not right. And in my estimation, Satan's had way too much fun destroying way too many lives with that word. It's not the big C. Christ is. That's the big C. And so we want to come under his authority. So if that's you... Receive prayer tonight. Know that God wants to heal you of that. He does not want you to be, oh, you might have two years to live. What? <laughs> I don't accept that. That's not God's purpose. 
Some folks are having some issues with COVID in this room even, probably. I don't know that for sure, but God gave me this word, COVID. And you know, there's symptoms and side effects from the vaccines people are suffering from. Anxiety, acid reflux, things that, were, that they didn't have before that are showing up now. And we're starting to see medical science, is this correct? We're starting to see it linked back to the vaccines, right? And so we don't have to have respiratory issues because of a vaccine. And you don't have to condemn yourself for having taken a vaccine. You can look back and say, well, that was stupid. No, it's, it, you're making the best choice given the best information you had. And, and we're not condemned for that. But we do want to take authority over it. And that's part of what we've been learning, you know, in, in the journey that Jesus has had us on, is that, listen, and he taught us, you know, he, 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 he went for three years showing people his intention for healing. He didn't ask you what you believed. <laughs> he might not even ask you your name. He just said, what's up? I need prayer for this. I need prayer for that. And what happened? Luke says he healed them all. That was a physician's testimony. He healed them all. And many came to believe in him. Not all. There were 10 lepers that day. They cried out to him, have mercy on us, heal us. He did. And then he said, go and show yourselves in the synagogue that they could be re-entered into community. That was part of the whole healing for them. He offered that whole healing for them. One came back and thanked him. We don't know about the other nine. <laughs> right? But it wasn't so much that his concern about, you know, what their life had been, but more than what it could be, what it could be with him. So if you're having any experience with COVID vaccine, you know, blowbacks, where you've had issues with your lungs or blood pressure or kind of cardiac items, we have a prayer. We'll pray that to go. We can do that right now. You can raise your hand. We can do that. Uh, same thing with the vaccine, as I mentioned before. You know, so if, if, if it's COVID, we have a prayer for that. If it's COVID vaccine, we have a prayer for that. It's been given to us. It's reliable. <laughs> That's what Jesus taught. He said, do what I do, what I do say what I say, because I only do what the Father says to do, and I only say what the Father says to say. So there's this connection of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and there's the invitation. You know, I just, I just want to check in with who's here. And I, on YouTube, I don't know who's going to listen to this, but I have... If, if you have not made the decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now's a good time. In fact, it's the best time. Now, in confession to each of you, this isn't about, you know, I don't know what the right word is. There's not a fire brimstone message here. But there is a truth message that we're a Christian body. And as we gathered you know, this evening and, and got to meet each other, we talked about the churches we come from. And so we know as Christians, we're called to believe John 3.16. We're called to believe the Bible. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that all who would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's pretty good. But I learned that it required a, dec a decision and it was one I audibleized more than once as a young adult and then on into my older years. And, and uh, those of you who know me well know that I uh, was very active in the church that I was a member of for life and uh, did all the things that a leader would do. I helped build buildings. I helped raise money. I, you know, when my kids' turn was to be in nursery, I took my turn being in the nursery as an adult in the nursery. I, I, you know, did acolyte work. It's not about me. It's just the point is I was in the church. I was active in the church, but I was, I was dead. <clears throat> I, was, I was a dead man walking. Does anybody else have that experience or know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, I, I came back from college. I got married. I had some kids. And I, I thought, well, it's the right thing to do is take my kids to church, give them a, give them a shot at, you know, 
I was a cynic. And one day this guy walked up to me and said, we want to invite you to this uh, men's group thing. What? People don't invite me to anything here. <laughs> what are you talking about? And this was my church. I mean, this was the church where my dad was one of the pastors, you know, and that's how I felt about it. And, uh, but he pressed in. I said, I, th I think you're talking to the wrong guy. No, no, we're intentionally asking you, would you come to this men's group thing? And so someone showed an interest in me, but as, as I moved through that time of listening to men share their testimonies, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of disturbance there for me, but there was this like, uh, there was a, you know, like, okay, it's, it's not just about, you know, giving my kids an opportunity. Um, in fact, if I really loved my kids, I'd probably try to get this Jesus guy. Because what greater gift could I give my kids you know, if I could actually, actually say I knew Jesus and, and begin to have a relationship with him. But I can tell you, it's, it's fast forward 40 years more, and it took 40 more years for me to be able to stand here and talk to, talk, have this conversation. <laughs> this, this didn't happen just overnight. But I do know it required a decision. And then as I would fall off and fall off and fall off, I would get this nudge, but you made it. But you made a decision. Aren't you good for your word? Now that's condemnation. I know where that was coming from, right? But Christ used that because when I was hearing that, I was also hearing how bad I was, right? And it, and it was just you know one more time that I was full of it with no intention. <laughs> but then we started seeing these cancers healing. You know, at, at church down the road from here. And it was like, I don't know what's up. Anyway, eight years later, here we are. So I, if there's anyone that's hearing my voice that hasn't made a decision, let me just say, if you cannot say here and now for yourself, I claim Jesus as my Lord and Savior, then maybe you could do this. Maybe you could say, Jesus, could you help me? I'd, I'd like to know for sure, could you show me who you are that I might claim you as my Lord and Savior? And that's what I'm talking about right now. He is showing up. I'd like to ask you just to take a moment and, and close your eyes. I know he's present. He's the most real person in the room. Three years ago, we we're in a different place. And the way appointments work here is you call... And you say, hey, um, my name's Mike. Um, I'm not really sure why I'm, I, I, something about a prayer. Oh yeah, sure, we can make you a prayer appointment. Would you like a prayer appointment? Okay, I guess that's why I'm calling. <laughs> okay, great. When's the best time you can come in? What? Well, you know, when can you, when can you make an appointment for me? No, 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 no. When, when's the best time for you to come? Any time of day. You know, just give us a couple choices and, and we'll get back to you. Well, how much is it going to cost me? No, no, we, we don't charge. <laughs> Everything's been given. See, we freely receive and we're to freely give. So, so as it comes to be, right, um, God shows up. So I invite you, even right now, uh, speak the name of Jesus. Just close your eyes. Some prayer ministers say, keep your eyes open. You don't want to miss a miracle. Keep them open if you want. I'm just inviting you to let Jesus meet you right where you are. I was going to tell you about three years ago, over the course of about three months, Skip and another prayer minister, I want to say it was Pastor John. I don't remember. It could have been you, Steve. But uh, these, these churchmen, these elders from different churches, you know, they're doing it, right? They're raising the money, they're building the buildings, they're giving the pastors all the support, calling for prayer. What's going on? And, and each one was asked a question, do you know Jesus? And each one was like, well, well yeah, sure, I go to church. 
I mean, you know, I say the prayers. No, no, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God? <laughs> and they found out they didn't. The shot was shocking, you know? I mean, I got everything going, but I still feel empty. Well, have you met Jesus? Would you like to? And each one of those guys met Jesus in that room and came out transformed. He's the one. It's not any words I can say. It's not the place. It's the faith. He is who he says he is. And if you're not sure about that, I invite you. If you've forgotten or you've backslid like me so many times, I just invite you to say the name Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, if we look at what's going on in the world, and the world so much wants us to look at it, it's so vain. Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's a mess out there. <laughs> Does anybody disagree with me? It's a mess. But the Bible doesn't speak about God saving the world outside the context of us. He sent his son to save the world. He's speaking the people. It's us. He's, he's, he's about saving us. And in the course of saving us, the world is saved. Amen? Amen? So I invite you to speak the name of Jesus often and see the healing that happens, see the transformation that happens. Um, my encounter with Jesus in 2015, I'm, I'm still enjoying the transformation of that. He's still unpacking it. And uh, it, it came out of the press of a friend or two and uh, me agreeing, um, you know, to do this. My wife was, was really encouraging also because I was, I was in a bad place. I didn't use the word depression because that's not manly. Men, men don't get depressed. <laughs> but uh, I was pretty low. And, uh, but I was so prideful that I wouldn't admit it and I wasn't going to do anything about it. I figured I got 30 years on this planet at best. I can coast through this with my eyes closed or open, doesn't matter. How, how pitiful is that? <laughs> That's pitiful. And um, I don't know where this uh, conversation got. This, none of this is in my notes, but... Uh, <laughs> But God is good, and um, I got in front of, um, you know, some people talking about healing. It's a big river. The river of God is a big river. I, I turned to the priest of the church, Episcopalians. I'm, I turned to the priest who went with me. It was a road trip. I agreed to do a road trip with him when we got this project done, and uh, I think I paid. But um, I said, we haven't heard any of this. Where have we been? And he said, well, it's a big river. I'm going to tell you it's a big river. But this guy started talking about uh, physical healing, and he was, he was giving us a lot of expectation, a lot of story about healing. And uh, he said, you know, we're seeing God heal people with metal. And so, you know, metal's used to pin bodies back together when they get wrecked by car accidents or some sort of trauma. And uh, there, that situation is frequently followed with a lot of pain. I know there's a, somebody in physical therapy here, and I know you all know what I'm talking about. Medical doctor, there's pain, right? And the trauma, and it, the cellular memory, our, our body locks it in, right? But he said, we're, no, we're seeing, we're seeing people healed of, of uh, that sort of situation. In fact, we're seeing the metal dissolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's 10,000 people in this um, center in Nashville. And Michael W. Smith had just played, did I say that already? Um, I mean, so it's a big deal. And this, this guy's talking, he's been on the planet 30 years doing this, and he's got statistics, you know, he's got, he's just talking matter-of-factly. Um, this is what we see. And because there's 10,000 people in this room, I, I can tell you right now that there'll be probably 
2,000 healings tonight, just us talking about it. And uh, some of you are gonna have to do with, it's gonna be having to do with metal. And then Alzheimer's, it's a little harder to, um, you know, show that in a meeting like this, but we're seeing Alzheimer's heal. Hallelujah. And I hear more accounts of that. Don't accept the fact that this is something that you can't, no, God is bigger than that. Way bigger, way, way, way bigger, way bigger. And there's a couple other things. And then he said, so if you don't have any of those things, it's okay. But if you have any of those things, raise your hand, you know, because we're going to start counting, you know, just, just raise your hand. Yeah, I got metal. And then <clears throat> if you start feeling a healing, you know, do something you couldn't do before, test it out. Deafness, people, people are receiving their hearing. We're seeing that. And um, so there's people moving around this. I'm watching, you know, and this old man stands up. There are not any old men in here, so... But this old man stood up, and, and uh, he's trying to move around, and he tells his wife, no, the pains in my hip are still there, sits back down. On the third time he gets up, I don't know what just happened, but that pain's gone. Thank you, Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And this guy stands up like three chairs, four chairs over me. He takes his hearing aid out. I don't know why he's standing up. Takes his hearing aid out, says to his wife, Mabel, say something. <laughs> nope, I can't hear you. A few minutes later, he's claiming hearing, right? And I was like, and then this young lady, she jumps up and she starts screaming and she goes running to the front of the of the center. And uh, she took the mic from Randy Clark. He, he didn't even have a choice. I think it was a lavalier thing. She yanked it off his head and he said, why are you here? Because it's, it's gone. I had my shoulder pinned from a car wreck like five years ago and it, it's always had a skin flap, but the metal was always up here. It's not there. <laughs> and he said, kindly get your doctor's uh, examination and send us the before and after. We'd like to document that one. But he said, you know, if, if, you're, if you're somebody who's got something, but I haven't called it out, God wants to heal it. If that's you, you know, check it out. Now, this is a very matter of fact conversation. I'm almost giving it to you word by word. It was all set up going into a video. He had a very grainy video from a telephone camera that was shot in a church in uh, Brazil. And uh, he let us know. He said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you this video because you're going to see things that you've never seen before. Just miraculous things. This is who God is. And so I'm sitting there still pretty, I mean, this is not for me. I don't even know why I'm here. You know, but then I remembered I, I couldn't move my arms. This is as high as I could put my hands. And it had been like that for five years. I hadn't been able to lift up my godson. I know some of you have heard the story, but I'm going to finish it because somebody hadn't heard it. And um, I've been told the only cure or solution would be rotator cuff surgery on both shoulders. And I knew guys that had done that, and I thought, well, that's... I don't like pain. I'm not going to do that. I don't raise my arm because I don't like pain. I'm not going to do that. And, and so Randy said, well, you know, try to do what you couldn't do before. And, it, and I remembered. I mean, that's how long I live with this. I, hadn't even, it wasn't even, I wasn't even conscious of this. And I remembered. And uh, I did that. <laughs> yeah. Which I didn't say. I had no context for that, really. Um, I mean, you know, there's the 60s, 70s, and 80s were different, but in the in 2015, I wasn't going to embarrass myself. Um, but I was shocked, and I got up and walked out of the chair to the aisle, and I pressed five push-ups without pain or issue, and I knew I could have done at least five more. I couldn't do that before, right? And I, I stopped at five because I didn't want to show off. But... Um, <laughs> I went back and sat down, and uh, as I remember Father Joe sitting here, and my, my friend Leo, uh, just a great man who's with the Lord, um, Father Joe speaks across me to Leo, what is Mike doing? <laughs> and Leo said, um, he's doing push-ups. Well, I can see that. Why is he doing that? Well, he couldn't do that before. Now he can. See, Leo knew because he was my godson's dad. I mean, he knew the... Anyway, um, it didn't end there. You know, um, but what I got out of that was, do you know I love you? 
And I, I didn't know he loved me. And uh, he, he did a couple other things with me there that I won't you know, go into tonight. But they were absolutely intimate and for me. And uh, I came back home, and we went to church that Sunday. Father Joe was on sabbatical. He didn't come back with us. We had this young priest from Wisconsin who was, he'd been pastoring two churches up there. And he had, he had the habit of, he'd give a sermon, and then he'd give announcements, and he had a habit of saying, if anyone has a, a word for the good of the, of the body, come forward. I'd never heard that said in an Episcopal church before, <laughs> not in a church service, right? And um, I jumped out of the pew and went running up, and uh, he's like, you know, like I'm not going to attack it. We didn't know each other. I mean, I've been away. He, you know, he was here. So I, I just, I liked his sermon a lot. I said, that was a really good sermon. You know, you really landed it. Oh, well, thank you. You know, like, what are you up here for? What's, what's your word? <laughs> And I, I turned to the congregation. All these people know me as, you know, this guy that blah, blah, blah. And uh, I said, I just got to tell you, I fell head over heels in love with Jesus. And, and if you haven't fallen head over heels in love with Jesus, I, I really encourage you, give him a shot, you know. And there was one woman in the place starts clapping. Everybody else is looking at me like, what has happened to Johnson? <laughs> you know, he's lost it. But uh, I did lose it. I did lose it. I said, we're going to prayer walk Venetian Village next Sunday. And they were like, what's that? I, I didn't know what that was either, you know? <laughs> and so uh, I'd been an acolyte, but I wasn't an acolyte that Sunday. And so the old guy who was acolyte, we're all old guys, he's suited up. He's, he's got the cross. He says, now let me make sure I understand. When we get done with this church service, I'm going to walk down the aisle. Somebody's going to open the front door. I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to walk across Venetian Village Bridge and back, and people are going to follow me? Is that, is that what's happening here? I said, yep. Okay. <laughs> and that's what happened. And even the Wisconsin priest, who had no clue what prayer walking was either, he brought up the rear, right, in his garb. <laughs> this was August. It was hot. And uh, some people were blowing their horns, and others were making gestures with their hands that I can't speak about. And uh, it was different, right? And uh, we got back and there were people waiting for us. And they said, gee, if we'd known, we'd have brought our golf carts, you know, so we could have come too. <laughs> they weren't up for walking that far. But we prayer walked the jail. We prayer walked. Uh, we, hit, we hit voting precincts. We did a lot of prayer walking that year. It was a lot of fun. God is taking Naples. It's his kingdom city. It's, it's been a fishing village forever. And I'm not the only one who's been saying that. Um, so you know, you're part of that. Heavenly Father loves you. And that was the message I got, you know, that, yeah, yeah, I do know you love me. And it started with a decision and, and people who love me and enough to say, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to let you die on the couch with your beer in the football game. There's, there's something more for you. And true enough, there is something more for me. So my, my wife just gave me a tip. I've got about 10 minutes I do want to unpack a couple of scripture for you. And then again, um, if there's prayer, that's why we're here. So um, I did have a couple other words of knowledge. Um, somebody's uh, just having consistently having headaches and uh, it doesn't seem to be anything you can do about it. Well, God can. We already touched on cancer and the COVID items. Um, Left ankle, I don't know if that's anybody. I just got a prompting on left ankle, so if that's anybody, God wants to heal that. I'm going to kind of do these in reverse order. I came across the scripture, by the way. Um, everybody that, you know, if you're a priest kid, people think you're getting all the, all the God stuff at home. And uh, so you can hide out, get away with pretty much anything you want to in church and wherever you go because you're a priest kid and they, they know you're getting it all at home. And um, I didn't actually start reading this book for myself until just a few years ago. And it um, doesn't help to pull your tab out before you get the page turn. Um, but there's this great word. I'm going to find it. <laughs> I got a handy here. You're going to love this word. You've never heard it, I bet you. Um, 
I hadn't heard it, but it's really good. It's Jeremiah 15, 16. Mm -hmm. who, know, who knows that one? You do? Adrian, you know that one? I know. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. All right, I got to it before you did. Okay, I don't park there very much, but I was, I don't know what I was doing. And uh, so listen to this. Um, where is it? Your words were found, and I ate them. <laughs> is that good? I mean, I just can't get off of that. That's so good. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your word was to me a joy, the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Do you get that? And that's my testimony. I just can't get enough of them. And then he goes on to write, for I am called by your name. See, he knows you, and he knows me. Why wouldn't he take care of us? He's our Heavenly Father. Of course he would. And then this part for men, especially, but not just for men. For I'm called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. Now, another translation of that is God of armies. Now, was there ever a time in the history of man that the army of God was more necessary than today? Is there anyone here who can't see themselves being mustered up? Because the call is on. And there are hurting people. There are seriously hurting people. And they're caught in this battle between two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the equipment. They don't have what you have. They don't know what you know. And we cannot take what we have been given lightly. It's a call. You're a, you're a warrior for Christ. And you're a warrior for Christ. I know you, men. You're a warrior for Christ, and you're a warrior for Christ. I know where you go. I know the battles that you're contending. You've got the armor of God in. We have this amazing manual. And it's time for the battle, and we don't have to take what's going on sitting down. And beer will not satisfy the pain that's in your gut. But he has a purpose and he has a plan. And if you'll say yes, he will unpack it. He will be the one that does it. Listen to Isaiah in 58. I love this. I mean, you could, you could camp out in Isaiah 58 forever. But in, uh, you know, he talks about the fast and acceptable day of the Lord. And you ought to check it out if you haven't. Because he talks about a fast, not the one where, you know, you walk around hangdog with ashes all over you and looking pretty pitiful. But, you know, you, you, you help somebody that's got uh, some needs. You, you maybe give that person your, your food and, you know, make sure somebody. So anyway, um, but he goes on to say in 8, uh, 58, 8. Um, yeah, so seven, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? You all have heard this in church. It's consistent and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. And when you see the naked, you cover them and not hide yourself from your own flesh. And then he goes on to say, those are questions. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. He's just saying, will you take care of my people and I will not deprive you. I will be right there with you. You don't have to worry about what's behind you. I'm your rear guard. You know the whole armor of God is forward. It's because he's, he's our rear guard. He's got us. We don't have to worry. And in fact, if you are worrying, stop it. <laughs> it's not good for you to worry. So don't worry. Just give God the praise. And, you know, sometimes maybe we think it's, it's all the healing message is all about uh, New Testament. And my gosh, you know, as Dan worshiped, Jesus and reminded us so much of, you know, the significance of the cross, the excellence of the cross, the beauty of the cross, the perversity of the cross, the salvation of the cross. But the whole Bible speaks about Jesus and healing. Here it is in Psalm 107. You go to Psalm 107. I don't know, is that the big one? And um, uh, verse 20 he sent his word and healed them. He's talking here about people that just keep going off the, off the track, you know, going the wrong way. And when they remember, they come back. That's my story. <clears throat> they cried out to the Lord in trouble. Well, I probably did that. 
and he saved them out of their distresses. I was certainly there. You probably have been too. You might be there now. But in, in verse 20, 107, 20, he said, he sent his word. That's, that's a big, big word right there. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I was bent on killing myself. Slowly. That was, um, you know, something I had to take responsibility for. However I got into it, God wasn't really concerned about that. He was concerned about getting me out of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll say hallelujah to that. And then uh, I noted uh, Matthew, so I guess I need to go there. See what I noted. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, you all still with me? You doing okay? Do, are you really? <laughs> Some of us started in this room about 4 o'clock today. Um, Matthew 11. Um, 24 through 25. Well, I was really focused on Jesus saying uh, in 28, Matthew 20, Matthew 11, 28, come to me. So here's that invitation. You know, it, it's, it's words we need to hear and remember. When it's looking pretty dark and ugly, he's the one that called light out of darkness. He's the one, there was no light. It was dark. It was, he called light out of darkness. He's the creator. He's the one with all power. So, so you know, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden. But, but he speaks about, you know, the consequences. War, woe to um, Chorazin, Bethsaida. These, these different places that just wouldn't repent, just wouldn't turn to him. That, that super word, you know, repent, we've made such, in the religious life that I've come from, repent's a big word. And it feels big. It feels like, oh, man, this is, is going to take a lot, you know? And all it is is recognize, ooh, you know, I missed the mark. I need to, I need to set my aim again here. I'm, I'm missing the mark, you know? He does the work. Jesus does the work. All we have to do is say yes to Jesus, and then he says, Come on to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And, and then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. That was my stubbornness. I'm, I'm now beginning to learn from him. It's so much fun. He's way smarter than I am. <laughs> and he likes to have more fun than I ever knew there could be. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. That's a, probably the only place you'll find him describing himself like that. I'm gentle and lowly of heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Is that not what we want? You know, a lightness for our soul. That's where the healing is. You know, our mind, our will, our emotions. Holy Spirit, you know, when we're born again, we receive all of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We spend a lot of money in this country, in this world, trying to make our body perfect. But actually, he operates through our soul. It's an inward operation. And as we allow him to have his way, transforming our mind and softening our will, taking the walls that I had so pristinely built around to protect me from the next trauma that I knew was coming. I just didn't know where it was coming from. My body's been, do you know, I had glaucoma. I was being treated for glaucoma and macular degeneration for years. And God healed my eyes. I'm counting on him doing the stigmatisms without the cataract surgery. He hadn't done that yet, but I'm still counting on him doing that because that's all I wear these for. So where I was on a, a massive amount of drops and, you know, being prepared for macular degeneration, God took me off of all that with the cooperation of the doctor. Imagine that. No more blood pressure medicine, no more cholesterol medicine. He's amazing. He is amazing. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Where else do you get from any leader between here and heaven that says, my burden is light and it's easy. I make it easy for you. 
I, I defy you to find one other Lord that would say it's easy. But that's who he is. I say hallelujah. And uh, I just want to give over to him everything that he is due, which is nothing less than all of me. This is all his anyway. And when I, when I yield, isn't that right, Carrie? When we say, have, let him have his way, right? And uh, someone, yeah, that's right. Someone asked earlier, well, sometimes we can fight, res resist, or we don't, we're deceived. There is deception. We ought to be clear about that. You know, the devil's pretty clever, and he knows us pretty well. But um, when prayer's offered around here, and there's prayer ministers in the room, um, often they're the ones who raise their hands first. Yeah, I'd, I'd like prayer, because we know how good it is to be present with the Lord, with another believer, and just let, letting Jesus show up. So if you, if you could join me in prayer. And, and if the Lord puts a word on your heart in this prayer, I would, I would love you to speak it out loud. Jesus, I thank you for causing us to realize that you have a purpose for us, that you have a plan. It may not look perfect right now. We may be in relationships. Or we may be facing some really serious situations. In fact, it may look really bleak. And for some, <laughs> death can slip up pretty quietly and pretty quickly. I know where my niece is. She reached the ripe age of 66, Lord. That's the number of man. And she passed at 707. <clears throat> the Sabbath day is the seventh day. That's the day of rest. That's the Lord's day. It's the day of perfection. So her family gets an assurance that she is with him. Hallelujah. And if you knew her story, you would say, only God could have caused that. I invite you to look it up. Love Lady Center in Birmingham, Alabama. And you'll see the name Joni Morton as the Outreach Center. Praise be to God. And she ministered there mightily for years. Following 10 years of incarceration for having an involuntary manslaughter charge with a mandatory sentence in the state of Florida. I thank you, Jesus, for who you are. There is nothing that Jesus can't do. And everything he will do, but for our asking, your experience with children, Marguerite, such a glorious experience of giving, but the, such a hardship for what you went through, but with such a preparation for the ministry he's had for you. Amen? Amen. You wouldn't trade it for a world, I know, and yet you're sure your daughter is with him because mm -hmm. he's made that assurance for you. Yes. Hallelujah. There's no pain, no suffering, no disease, no sadness, no worry. No. Right? Right? And for those of us who believe Jesus, you, you've given us the assurance. We die with you at the cross. We were buried with you. We rose with you, and we ascended with you. Your kingdom came when you came, and we can still live in your kingdom today by faith in you. Because your will is being done in our lives, Jesus. It's not perfect. But we recognize more and more that we're seated with you in heavenly places, even right now. And so our prayers come down from heaven more than they go up because we're with you, Jesus, and you're with us. You abide in us and we abide in you. My word is let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. I've heard that. I think we need to. Well, I, it, the Lord gave me the other day, he said, you know, you're a frontline ministry. It's a frontline mission. See, we talked a little bit about our churches. So what are we doing in our churches to help our churches mobilize, right? Because we have a responsibility. We know something some people don't know yet. But we're not to wait, you know. So some people might call you for an appointment, but you may need to get out. And we may, we may need to start praying for people as we see them, you know. May I pray for you?
you know. So in that video, I'll just wrap it up with Randy Clark and thank you, thank you for the prayer. And if there's more words in the prayer, prayer is a conversation. It might start with, in the name of Jesus, and it might end with amen. So be it. And we want to operate in the name of Jesus. Randy Clark finally got that video to work. And, on, and in the center with 10,000 people, he's on stage. It's, it's a grainy black and white kind of a thing. And it's, it's not a lot of light. Mm -hmm. But there are people coming up, being prayed for, leaving crutches, leaving their wheelchairs, you know, doing this, doing that. And from the far end comes this woman. And she's, she's, she's coming fast. And as she's coming, this guy who's got his camera going, shooting across the stage this way, and, and the congregation's out here. And this woman's, and there's people screaming. And the camera catches what's going on. This woman had no eye. And the Lord was giving her a creative miracle. <laughs> Whew. And the camera caught an eye being formed in the socket of her head. <laughs> That's who God is. Uh -huh. And there's more. There's more stories like that. Every person who can make a conscious decision will have an opportunity to receive or reject Jesus soon. There will not be one person left behind. There will be those who refuse. God help them. But many will come, and many are coming. And Jesus is manifesting himself over and over and over. Make no mistake about it. It's not in the news, but change your news, Jason. You know, go to YouTube and start catching some of this. Because uh, God is very, very active today, and we can be very encouraged. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, all right. Anything? Anything for the good of the body? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.